I was born in Brisbane because my parents lived in the in the bush and so I had to, my mother had to go to Brisbane and that was on the 26th of the 11th 1923 and we lived at Koran for, for oh, another few years and then we moved to a place called Black Mountain outside Karoi and uh, I was there for all my primary schooling, a little one teacher school, except my mother was a school teacher, so we, we were kept up to date. <laughs> I went away to boarding school, and after that I went to business college, and then I went to work. And, uh, and that, that'll be in about 1930, so 1939, 1938, and 1939 the war started. I was only 15 at the time. A friend of mine was in signals. She was the first lot to go through. I was still too young. And she said, signals is the thing to get into. So uh, I then found a sailor who would teach me to said Morse code and uh, I've concentrated on that until I was old enough to go into the services. And then I went in as a trainee telegraphist, learning to all the Morse code and, uh, and the procedure for sending and receiving messages. There's quite a lot to it actually. And then I, f I finally got in. Did our rookies at Turak, and then the uh, wireless school, Wurugalin, I think it was called, and uh, it was at Turak too. We were in beautiful homes there that were stripped bare. We slept on the floor. <laughs> it's like dormitories. Yeah. And if you wanted hot water, you had to stoke the donkey. They gave us a test, and the test seemed to be if you could still do a, a square root. Well, I hadn't left school that long that I could still do a square root. <laughs> so I got in and we went to Point Cook to do radio theory. We were there for about three months, I think. And we were the first course that went through. And then they transferred us, holus bolus, to Laverton. And the poor little RAF sergeant that was there, the last thing he wanted was a lot of WAFs around his neck. <laughs> but he, uh, he put up with us until we were capable of running the place ourselves. And then he was transferred, much to his delight. <laughs> well, actually, when they posted me to Mariborough, they posted another four girls there too. So there were five of us to take over the direction finding station there. Well, we worked in a little hut off the Air Force Station, yeah, the airport, which is now. Actually, we were only at a training station, but we, what we did, if the plane got into trouble, fog, fog or something like that, they would call us and we, could, we would give them our bear, their bearing from us and then they'd fly on a bit and contact us again and we'd give them our bearing again and we'd bring them right over the top of us. And then from there, they had a special uh, way of uh, landing. But it, it was an interesting job though. And we ignored any moors that came from the Timor Sea area. And, uh, but there was Richmond, Parks, I think Nil and ourselves all on the same frequency, listening what distress frequency it was. 
and uh, one night we got a, a Japanese morse off Gabo Island and I don't know what happened to it or anything but we all set our bearings in and they could pinpoint it. When the patrols went out in the morning we switched over onto their uh, frequencies and they'd often forget there were girls at the other end. <laughs> there were only 40 of us in Australia. <laughs> eight, eight stations and five of us at each one. No. no, we all got along well together. Mind you, you worked on your own shifts. We had a guard to guard the hut we were in. Someone said, you need a guard to guard the guard. <laughs> well, we went to dances. <laughs> I'd played tennis. Uh, played hockey. That's more or less filled in the time. <laughs> those, those days, if you got married, you automatically were put off. But I didn't meet my husband until after the war, so there was no problem. Well, he'd just come back, he was in the infantry. He was actually full of malaria and he'd been had a head wound. And uh, he'd been knocked about, but he, uh, he was discharged, came back to head office. I stayed on in for another 12 months. So he had gone to Cunnamulla by the time I got out. So I still, I knew of him, just being in the same firm, but I hadn't caught up with him. <laughs> I got sent out to relieve his typist. <laughs> oh, he decided fairly quickly that we'd get married. He wanted a cook, he said. <laughs> My husband's health broke down and we had to, he had to do a manual job rather than the hectic, uh, Managing, you know, managing thing, managing the branch. So we went farming between Ipswich and Boona, and we managed to put the five children through the grammar schools there. And a bit of an effort at times. <laughs> Anyway, it was all worth it. He passed away in uh, January 2013. He was 98. Got five children, 15 grandchildren, and uh, nearly 17, I think it is, great-grandchildren. <laughs> Well, I played croquet. Uh, I was secretary of the church guild for quite a while. I kept myself busy. <laughs> you just pick a spot where you're the least trouble to the least number of people. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.